This isn't the Brisbane River. It's a creek in suburban Ashgrove, close to Brisbane's CBD. Unbelievable. More anxious than scared. Like, your home is your home. So when you see it sort of potentially threatened like that, uh, and that's the helplessness is there's nothing you can do. The creek, normally behind Brett Ambrose's family home, is one of 22 creeks, along with three rivers, that make up the catchment for a city built on a floodplain. The largest downpour in the state capital and surrounds history caused yet another devastating and deadly flood for a city with a long record of disasters. We knew it flooded here, so we've, we've built that way, but that level of water was so extreme. Yeah, if it got more than that, that just becomes a bit, you know, unknown and uncertain. Yeah. It's not by accident that Dr Margaret Cook lives on the top of a hill at Ipswich, yeah. west of Brisbane, away from creeks and rivers. Not at all. I mean, I'd be foolish not to, but um, having said that, I still got flooded on the weekend from overland flow because it came through the stormwater drains. She's an environmental historian and author of a recent book about the Brisbane River catchment called A River with a City Problem. Dr Cook says this flood was a hybrid of previous disasters. In 2011, it was mainly in the headwaters and largely over Widenhoe Dam and upstream. This time, lots of water fell downstream of the dam and into the creek systems. Even so, the equivalent of four Sydney harbours flowed into the major drinking water and flood mitigation dam. This is Kedron Brook at its beautiful Brisbane best, about six kilometres north of the city. But at the height of the crisis, it looked like this. When the rain stopped, the water threatening this bridge was mostly gone in 16 hours. Australia has very variable river systems, but Brisbane is supposed to have the most variable, so it's very prone to flooding. Dr Cook says now is an opportunity to reflect and take action, because with climate change, things are predicted to get worse. If these floods are coming more frequently and potentially getting bigger, we need to change the dynamic at the moment, we spend a lot of our energy in cleanup. We spend most of our money in cleanup. We need to change that so we spend more money on preventative measures. The academic says there are lots of well-known strategies that can help. We can change how we build our houses. I'm in a Queenslander, so the water can flow underneath. We really need to look at our planning codes about where we're building. Either creek or river flooding or overland flows have affected every suburb in a city of two and a half million people. People have died and lives have been upturned. I sit back and weep at the moment for the loss of lives and the loss of property and think, oh my goodness, we need to start making some difficult decisions. Lord Mayor Adrian Schrinner says Brisbane, an Olympic city in 2032, has always had to deal with water. The story of Brisbane has always been a story that has had flooding in it and it's about taking a risk management approach. He says many lessons have been learned. There's things that we can continue to do, but there was a lot done after 2011 that has improved the situation. Uh, but we're always open to uh, working with the community, working with other levels of government to make any improvements that are necessary. Brett Ambrose believes with climate change, flooding's going to happen more and more. But for now, ahead of discussions with his wife, he's willing to take the risk at his home. There's a few days in that long period of time it's not good, uh, but the rest of the time it's really nice. So it's a balancing act, but we're just really lucky we, we managed to get through this, you know. And we did. That's a bit of a clan up. It's a bit of a, bit of a job ahead of us, but that's all right, you know. John Taylor, ABC News, Brisbane.